Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching Night Cruise on Night TV. And in this very important segment, dear viewers, charter flights from Russia to the Red Sea resorts resume after a long suspension. And that's wonderful news, of course, to all Egyptians here in Egypt and all tourists back in Russia. Irregular flights resumed to Ogada and Sharm el Sheikh resorts, which will contribute, of course, to increase in the flow of tourists from Russia to Egypt. The Federation of Tour Operators said that with the resumption of charter flights, the price of tourist trips from Russia to Egypt decreased by 20% and Russian tourism sector officials said that the price of a one-week tourist trip a charter flight now ranges from 15,000 to 26,000 Russian rubles. On August the 9th of this year, regular flights from Russia to Sharm el Sheikh and Urgada were resumed. The same, this came after Moscow and Cairo agreed in April of this year to fully resume air traffic between the two countries of course including egyptian resorts and in this context dear viewers we have a very special amazing guest with us today as we're hosting a nile cruise and our guest is of course uh yumna salema a touristic expert which we always love to be her to be with us in our every segment in nile cruise because of her informative knowledge all about tourism a very good day to uh, mrs yumna good and it's day. a pleasure of course to have you with us in today's episode of nile cruise and always a pleasure to have you because you're very special and very dear to us course thank you for having me and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning Grana okay. nice to see you uh, Yumna of course uh, all the news we've heard is uh, really optimistic and um, of course uh, uh, makes negative vibes uh, everywhere uh, positive vibes everywhere all around and how do you assess the state's efforts in Russian flights resumption and how do you assess tourist flow in the Red Sea resorts and do you believe that beach tourism is back on correct, the correct track again? Okay, first of all, I can uh, shed light on something very important that uh, our Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities and actually all the um, uh, efforts uh, from our government are actually working in one direction since uh, COVID uh, to actually resume and continue with the tourism business as much as we can after the time of lockdown so they took lots of uh, steps uh, from foreign exhibitions abroad from uh, contracts and conferences from encouraging the uh, agents and the travel agents to come to egypt from actually trying also to follow up the international procedures and protocols against uh, to protect against the covid and egypt was one of the countries that actually started taking all the precautions in order to uh, regain the tourism again. So this is the result of all our efforts done in the past uh, one and a half year that today we can see the flow of uh, charter flights, not just from uh, Russia, but also from Germany and other destinations to the Red Sea uh, resorts, especially when we have this time of the year and other countries in Europe is actually winter and they can enjoy here the sun which is also very important uh, to be actually in a healthy condition to have the sun to stay in open places as much as you can because Rana you know when you travel to Europe and the weather is cold you're staying in indoor areas so now it's time for the people even in uh, Europe to come and enjoy the beautiful weather here in Egypt especially in the Red Sea resorts uh, which is also very important for us for our economy uh, here in Egypt and the tourism sector as well. Uh, of course, uh, Ms. Yumna, tourists in Sinai can do different kinds of activities from, of course, safaris to driving to rock climbing. And uh, what are other activities uh, which we, could the state in, uh, invent to attract tourists in Sinai? Sinai is a blessed area in Egypt. Sinai has got it all. You have the history, the culture, so you can do culture, tourism, visiting uh, the historical uh, places such as St. Catherine, the monastery, the Mount of Moses. Lots of historical places are in Sinai. And also Sinai has the adventure tourism. People can go on safari, they can go to the canyon, uh, climbing. Uh, not, of course, to forget the most important thing in Sinai, which is the, red, uh, the water sports, where you can go uh, water skiing, snorkeling, scuba diving and all the other water sports wind surfing uh, kite surfing all different kinds of water sports can be taken so you have actually culture tourism 
you have an historical tourism, you have the adventure tourism, and you have the, the water sports uh, tourism, and the entertaining tourism, entertainment, where you have the, the uh, hot spots for the nightlife in Sharm el Sheikh and Horgada, so people can enjoy also this kind of tourism, the entertaining uh, tourism. Wonderful, Dr. Mrs. Yumna. Minister of Tourism decided to set a minimum price for the sale of four star and, uh, of course, five star rooms in order to raise the price of tourism um, quality and services in the Red Sea cities. And the decision will be implemented in November of the year 2021, which, as, as we, as this month actually. Uh, how do you read this? Well, I read this very positive. And I think this will help a lot to encourage more uh, tourists to come to Egypt and also to keep the standard and the quality of uh, the, the, our hotels and resorts and the service being provided in uh, hotels and resorts as well. Okay, uh, would you shed more light on the precautionary measures uh, taken in Red Sea resorts, please? First of all, Egypt is one of the countries that you cannot enter uh, without having a, a negative PCR test and you need to show this at the uh, airports so this is number one it's very important we do encourage all tourists coming to Egypt to be uh, fully vaccinated and once they arrive into uh, Egyptian airports this will be checked always uh, checked uh, travel uh, agencies are also uh, sending uh, such uh, requirements to uh, the foreign travel agencies to make sure that guests are already prepared when they come to Egypt. Once they get to the hotels, as I'm in the sector and I'm working as a tour guide, the first thing we tell our guests, uh, please uh, show us your PCR test and your vaccination uh, card, and then do not forget to put on your mask. There is in many travel agencies, um, and actually we are very strict about that, sitting in the buses, does not exceed the 50% uh, uh, of the, no, the capacity of the bus. Uh, being in uh, indoor areas, people must be wearing their masks, using the sanitizers all the time. When they take off their mask in open areas, we ask them to keep the distance. And we always spread our hands like that and tell them, keep the distance. So at least they can breathe, but they need to keep the distance. And in hotels, the room service uh, also uh, applying a new system that they will not come uh, actually uh, three times uh, per day to clean the room. They will come upon request. Maybe once a day the rooms will be cleaned and upon request they can call to minimize the number of housekeeping members and uh, getting into the rooms. Towels will be changed also upon request. Uh, when you have the restaurant, they can allow the groups to go in different timings so they extend the time of the open buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so people can have more time, so they are not all uh, sitting in large numbers in one closed areas. On the beaches, they keep the distance as well between each uh, a set and the, and the other set. So there are many actually rules and precautions that we are taking care, and that's why, thanks God, tourism is back in, in Egypt. Yes. So we're very thankful to God, and of course, to the efforts that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the government and uh, all actually the institutions here in Egypt are working together hand in hand. And of course, our media is working with us to shed light always on what's been uh, taken. And we have to be very thankful to have a, such a wonderful tourist expert like you, uh, Yumna, Thank in you so Egypt. Much. It's, uh, of course, amazing to have you. How do you view tourism, uh, the tourism ministry's policy of integrating beach um, uh, tourism and culture tourism? Uh, this is very important. It's, it's actually a very good and question. And if you could please define to the viewers the difference between beach tourism and culture tourism. Please. Yes, the culture tourism, it's one of the main uh, kinds of tourism here in Egypt. Of course, uh, based on our uh, long history and civilization, that no one in the world can compete exactly. with Egypt. No one. Uh, no one. <laughs> So we're very even in light of the coronavirus pandemic, <laughs> nobody could compete and nobody did what we did actually. Exactly. Yeah. The Sphinx Avenue that was uh, the parade that happened last Thursday was out of this world. All the world is discussing, all the world is talking. It, it's, it was wonderful. All the agencies were watching. It was amazing. Yes, um, world media is uh, spotting lights on Egypt 
I was so proud to see Egypt, the headlines of everywhere, all newspapers. It's, it's amazing. So proud, actually, as an Egyptian, as a, a tour guide as well. Um, back to your question, yes. culture, tourism is uh, one of the main kinds here in Egypt and um, no one is to compete with that. That's why integrating all different kinds of tourism with this part is very important. We have something that we call in our touristic programs quick trips. Quick trips, that means that all the guests coming to the destinations you mentioned earlier, like Hurghada and Sharm el-Sheikh, the Red Sea uh, resorts, they normally are called in our, tourist, in our touristic language, they are beach holidayers. They like to stay on the beach and do the water activities. So we need to attract them to come and do the culture tourism. So to make a quick trip to Cairo or a quick trip to Luxor and visit the culture part and the historical part. And this is actually what we call quick trips or we call them one day excursion overnight or over day. So they, all the buses, if you see this uh, scenery actually, all the buses of tours and of course, uh, since you are speaking about that, Russian tourists, they come in huge numbers like 10, 15, 20 buses from the Red Sea uh, resorts to Cairo for a day excursion and they return back and sometimes for an overnight. So integrating this part is very important and I do uh, encourage all travel agencies to sell in their programs, even if it's a, a, a beach holiday, mm -hmm. to put this as uh, one of the days as a day excursion or an overnight excursion to Cairo or Luxor uh, because it's very important. To, you, you cannot be a, a tourist coming to Egypt without seeing the pyramids, without seeing the Karnak after all what we have done now yes. and the, the reopening of the Sphinx Avenue, Amazing. you need to be in Karnak yes. and Luxor. So travel agencies actually need to put it in the program and not to be sold just as an optional. Today it's sold as an optional. Who wants to go? Okay, who doesn't? But if it's uh, like an uh, uh, important part, mandatory or obligatory in the touristic program, already sold out, and that way we make sure that all clients and guests coming to Egypt are actually enjoying uh, this important part because this is the integration you're talking about. Okay, uh, Mrs. Yumna, a very important question that I'd like to ask you. Uh, of course, under the auspices and uh, directives of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, uh, of course, we have been witnessing the opening and inauguration of wonderful museums in Sharm el-Sheikh and Irgada, uh, the Namik, uh, the, of course, um, uh, now the uh, uh, Luxor, ta um, the Sphinx Avenue, where the Ramp Road is yeah. reopened and renovated. Uh, uh, the gem is on the way and is loading. Inshallah. So uh, in light of all of these antiquities that do we do have in Egypt and we're proud to have in Egypt and Minister of, of, of Tourism of course uh, Mr. Khaled Anini is working so hard on this under of course again the auspices and directors of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The tourists when he comes to Egypt uh, to meet our cra the cradle of civilization which uh, of course um, we have assured to all the world all around the world that we are the creator of civilization and we are doing this by our own youth nobody is doing it the young fairies are doing it this time how long will a tourist stay in egypt to finish and watch every single place in egypt in egypt i'm discussing all over egypt are they going to go to luxor and uh, as a destination alone once and then go to orgada and sharm el sheikh as a destination another time and come to cairo as a destination uh, or they can combine all together and it's going to be able uh, to watch everything and all the artifacts and all the wonderful temples we do have all around Egypt of course basically in Luxor and Aswan. So Rana actually I love this question I, I love, love your question you. <laughs> I love the question it goes without saying yeah, yeah. so um, let me start by also thanking our president and our leadership uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi and our leadership because without a wise careful uh, leadership we could not manage all what we achieved uh, today. And this has been the case also since the time of the ancient Egyptians. And back to your question, how long it will take? I tell the tourists when they ask me this question, I tell them you need to stay forever in Egypt. Forever? Forever. Because the gem, Egypt, the gem needs three months alone. Leave alone, leave alone all them, the rest. The gem you know, needs there are Egyptians here, if our cameraman and we are as Egyptians. Asad is on top of the cameraman's yeah, deal, the, director of photography. Exactly. We don't have Vietnam. So there are places that even we as Egyptians did not explore and see. 
So if we want to answer this question, like tell them, okay, you need to stay forever to make them understand how big and rich Egypt is. But if we want to talk about the, the, the program that will cover the highlights, but not everything, just cover the highlights, I always say about two weeks. About two weeks in Egypt, you will be able to cover the highlights between uh, Cairo, uh, Luxor. Two weeks? And, uh, two weeks, Cairo, Luxor, Aswan, one of the Red Sea destinations, and Alexandria, if you like. That's the highlight. Alexandria is a must. Alexandria is a must, uh, in my opinion, of course, because it's actually the metropolitan Alexandria. Exactly. It's, it's Alexandria. And, and I know Alexandrian people, they're very proud when they go abroad, they say, I am Alexandrian. <laughs> Alexandrian Egyptian. So I would say two weeks is a, a, a good period of time for the tourists to explore the highlights of Egypt. And of course, you can add to that if you want to go into the oasis, if you want to go in other destinations, because as I said, Egypt is big. You need to stay here forever to explore everything. Even me as a tour guide, there are places that I still need to explore uh, intensively, actually. Are you sure about your answer? It's two weeks after the opening of the gym? Yeah, I would say two weeks because I'm putting also in consideration, Rana, the, the holidays abroad. I'm putting in consideration how people get time off work. Normally you have Christmas holidays, you have Eastern holidays, so normally the guests don't have more than two weeks. So I'm putting in consideration also how, I, I don't want to say three weeks, so they will not able, you won't be able to take, can you take off three weeks from your work? You can it will be a lot. Weeks, yeah. So I'm saying two weeks and actually, uh, this is the, uh, this is busted. <laughs> <laughs> the ancient Egyptians are around us everywhere. So anyway, two weeks, I would say this is a, a good time with putting the highlights in a very good order so guests can enjoy uh, the highlights. Of Wonderful, Yumna, I took this answer from you, but I was wondering and wondering, so I had to ask you this question on my own, actually. After the opening of Sharm el-Sheikh and Orgada Museums, the Tourism and Antiquities Minister announced that Egypt will be launching direct flights from Sharm el-Sheikh uh, to Luxor and Orgada uh, to Aswan to enable tourists to enjoy cultural tourism. Um, how do, what's your motto on this, Yumna? Um, enjoying cultural tourism um, a motto for that mm. that's also another question well i i think <laughs> i would use another question that you love yeah yeah i would uh, say it's a long it's a long sentence but it's very important say uh connecting our history and past with the present for a better future that will be the motto. I love your answer. Yeah, that, that's what I want everybody to, to, to put in mind and to carry in their hearts, connecting our history and past with the present for a better future. Hopefully, yeah. Um, reopening several museums emphasizes the unprecedented support that the state gives to the tourism and antiquity sector. Again, your motto. Um, that's something very special for uh, museum lovers. So I would say uh, for museum lovers, Egypt is a paradise for you. That will be the motto for this uh, part. Uh, Yumna, as part of the Tourism and Antiquities Ministry's strategy for digital transformation, some museums operated e-payment machines, of course, for museums and free tickets to make it easier yeah. and to facilitate the entry, of course, to the museum. Uh, would you tell us more about this move and its significance and the ministry's project to develop visitor services, especially that we have already um, yes. started this in yes. the uh, Egyptian Museum, museum in uh, Tahrir. Tahrir, yes. It's already now. Action. The world is turning into a digital world and uh, that's why we have to uh, be up to the international levels and standards and this is also to facilitate lots of things. So as you mentioned, we started in Tahrir Museum, the Egyptian Museum at Tahrir Square. We are starting in other places as well. Uh, by the way, there are also other places for the parking. The touristic buses, you get the digital car, uh, tickets and so on. And I think this is going to be in all uh, touristic sites. And there will be also a possibility to buy them online. So to facilitate the process of guests standing in lines in our high seasons. So there will be also a possibility to buy online. And there is already the, the Cairo Pass and the Egypt Pass and the Luxor Pass. Those are um, 
inclusive tickets for many touristic areas that the guests can buy uh, ahead and even from um, from abroad planning, before, before they yeah, come, before, before they arrive to Egypt. Exactly, they can buy the Egypt Pass, the Cairo Pass, the Luxor Pass, and I enjoy that. So that's very important, and it, I think it's helping a lot nowadays the, the, uh, to facilitate the move and the flow of uh, tourists uh, and make it easy for them to enjoy Egypt. And, and adding to that, by the way, our subway. Oh, our subway yes. system that is being now developed and many many lines are being added and it's a dream for uh, any tourist to come at Cairo International Airport and take the subway directly to the Giza and uh, the Sphinx, the Giza Pyramids and the Sphinx and to be able to access all touristic sites by the subway and of course the the new monorail of course this is also okay one final question president Fatah sisi left the emergency law of course after four years that it was applied how far will this decision help in promoting the safe and secure image of uh, of egypt uh, i think this is a message of uh, peace and security from egypt to the world not to say that before we were not uh, safe or secure we were we were always safe and secure but uh, actually taking this decision uh, sheds lights more on this particular part. And it gives a, a relief feeling for the tourists. When, when you are visiting a country under this uh, law, you kind of feel it's a psychological thing. You might have some, uh, sus you know, you might suspect, you might feel uncomfortable. But now, after this declaration and after uh, saying that, out, out loud, uh, this will comfort on a psychological level because I would say Egypt was always safe. Uh, God bless Egypt. So, uh, but this is important for the psychological part for tourists coming into Egypt as well as a clear message out loud. Uh, Egypt is peaceful and secure. Mrs. Ziyomna Salema, of course, a tourist expert. It's a pleasure to have you with us in every single episode of Nile Cruise. Your informative knowledge adds to us a lot. Thank you so much for joining us today on a very wonderful day after a wonderful parade that uh, the entire world was watching and uh, added uh, pride to Egyptians and every single Egyptian. And thank you for joining us in this segment. Uh, thank you, Rana. It's always a pleasure to be with you and to be with Nile TV International. Thank you. Dear viewers, this is all for this the segment of Nile Cruise. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be back again.